Ah, shit. This episode of Defective Discourse has been brought to you by our patrons. Here at BRG, we'd like to thank those patrons who have subscribed and donated. It is because of generosity like yours that makes this show possible. Def -f -f Effective Discourse. Welcome to the show where we talk about the topics that matter to you. Video games, media, technology, all starting now. I'm going to need a hearing aid and, and learn to do oh, both. Holy shit. Okay. We should have audio. We may not have the <laughs> intro music, but we should have audio. There we go. I heard audio. God damn it. <laughs> uh, Zay's bad. Hey, Zay. How's it going? Uh, hi, guys. Zay's is like, oh, there we go. <laughs> oh, toxic. Welcome. So, good evening, everybody. I'm hoping you can now hear me dandily. I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm praying because CZ says he's got it fixed. Yeah. Just, I'm just here to be a pretty face and fail at it. Um, technical issues are all, all, all. <laughs> this guy's fault down here. <laughs> yeah, that may have been a technical issue. Yeah. My, my, it may have been a technical issue. I, I believe the technical failure was uh, Pipcac. <laughs> Anyways, guys, hey, welcome to another uh, wonderful adventure that we call uh, Defective Discourse. This is a wonderful show where we get together in a roundtable format. We get to talk about some tantalizing, interesting topic from the gaming tech or uh, media world normally. Um, we are definitely going to try to keep on that realm and rarely get away from it. And we'll definitely never talk about politics or religion. And I can't promise a goddamn thing. But anyways, well, I, I, I can't. I can't guarantee we won't talk about politics. <laughs> what can possibly go wrong talking about politics? Come on now. <laughs> hang on, hang on. Let let me pray about this. <laughs> <laughs> Accurate. Hey guys, quick... Accurate. So we we are we are a wonderful and, and small bunch of people and uh, simply a small piece of the whole, which is Battle Rocket Gaming as a gaming community. We are a wonderful community, loves to get together, play games, do media, have lots of fun and whatnot. So definitely make sure you stick around toward the end of the show. We'll tell you a little quick something about BRG. Or if you're really impatient, we do have links right down below us here where you can check us out with all the wonderful places you can go to. So it's kind of one of those you know self guided show tours we'll you or come along with us. BRG, we'll show you the sites here. Really Anyways. You have links Tonight, right down below guys, so we're we can check us out. All the wonderful places you can go to. What? So it's kind of what happened. Now I you're was, scaring me. I was getting chat open, and I and apparently I muted the audio, and apparently it unmuted itself on the fly. Hmm. Tonight. Hey, hey, hey. How's it going? <laughs> okay, okay, okay. I still hear audio. First, there's not right, enough so audio. Now there's too much audio. Come on, guys. You know, I... I, I take full responsibility. I should have had my chat open early. <laughs> that was the one thing I forgot when I was setting everything up is, hey, I might want to pop out chat so I can see what's going on. Oh, gotcha, gotcha. <laughs> Anyways, guys, so... Tonight we're gonna to be we're gonna pick up a couple of the popular uh, gaming and or tech related uh, type topics and kind of run with them. Now, due to all of the interesting stuff that has come out in the past month worth of news and other things, we don't have anything in particular that is necessary a, a absolute um, must talk about topic. Something we call an opening topic. So we're just gonna go ahead and put our face to the winds, kind of pick up a, a random uh, topic to talk about. Um, Normally, what we like to have it do is a, is a wheel of doom to spin with. However, we don't have that. So we're just going to leave the fates to a, uh, a random number generator and kind of pull from that. Uh, right, Jesus. Do you feel comfortable with the topics we have? I think you're ready for this. Sure, we can do that. We can do it. Okay. <laughs> I, I do, have no do doubt. Do you have faith in me that... Uh, really? That uh, the numbers I roll here are, are going to be real, well and truly random. 
So, our topic tonight, ladies and gents, is going to be topic number four, which is one, two, three, and two. Uh oh. Uh oh. So, our wonderful topic tonight, Dad, if you want to pull this up, is going to be should law enforcement be allowed to use genetic services to track down criminals? I have a question for you. Did you just call me Zaz? Does it sound like you did? I might have. Sorry, Z. Um, so Nobody really, saw the is... dramatic zoom. <laughs> so here's 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 the deal for you guys. We'll pull up the uh, article. You guys can uh, look at stuff, play along at home if you like. So basically, we'll give the backstory here, and then we can kind of uh, dive into it again, guys. This is a roundtable. We do include the chat in our conversation, so please do feel free to pipe in. If you guys haven't already heard about this, what the backstory is is that uh, there was a killer from actually a while ago now called the uh, Golden State Killer, somebody who had gone on dead multiple killings and was never caught. Recently, the cold case went hot again when a detective decided to take some some abandoned DNA uh, from the crimes and basically put it up on an open source uh, genetic profile site. So this is this was not the ones you would think of, like Twenty Three and Me. Yeah, but I'm thinking of those type of service. So they okay, okay. this person's DNA, created a fake account. And posted basically the the DNA uh, to that account, and they got some hits on some relatives, cousins, and whatnot that helped uh, drastically narrow the band of plausible people that could have been the murderer. And thanks to that, they were able to narrow it down enough and find plausible people, and ultimately find the killer. Well, somebody they assume is a killer now going to be put to trial, of course. Um, in this wonderful, you know, country, <laughs> innocent though proven guilty, but it's 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 pretty assured that he's going to get <clears throat> off the bus and then some. So that's that's the basis of it there. But the question now comes up is talking about the fact that the the basically this is law enforcement using you know an open source service to upload DNA to to find this person and kind of our heads up on the idea of is this legal in our minds or or I guess I mean, technically it is but should it be is this okay are we okay with this so <clears throat> here help me out here so okay if it helps them solve something like this where you have an actual serial killer even if it was 30 40 years ago and they catch the right guy that's the thing they got to be sure they're catching the right guy right they can't be just putting someone who's innocent behind bars, right? Sure, why not? I mean... Sure, you why know, not? There you, you go. Thanks for joining us today, guys. Canadians, <laughs> <laughs> okay. okay uh, uh, the, the thing I'm a little unclear on is, is this uh, public database that he po posted it up to as a service. For them to get a match on the DNA that they must have had lying around as evidence from the case back when, whenever the case was... That would mean that this person, or potential, this person would have to have would have to have put his DNA in that same pool. So not in this particular case, and this is where things get interesting. So I'm glad you brought this up. So to to be clear, the the, the service they use is a is a um an open database, and the idea is you you put your genetic information there, and then multiple different companies can tether to that. So if ah. you go to 23andMe. And yeah. splitting the tube and whatnot. Twenty Three Me has their own database uh, of. <laughs> of <okay. laughs> I'm sorry, I had to. So pull from this other res, uh, this, uh, this other um, pool of DNA, so to speak, to uh, to garnish additional information. Now, this particular person that is decided to be the killer did not put his DNA in any system. Oh, okay. So he has the record in these public services. What he did have is abandoned DNA, and one of his relatives has submitted their DNA. So this this would be the case of like me trying to track down who took a bite out of my sandwich. I take a DNA sample from the abandoned DNA and post it online, and I find out that it was you, 
because I posted your DNA. Your brother had posted his DNA for this matching service, and it happened to strike and go, hey, you guys are very, very similar. You're very likely similar, yeah. re related. Exactly. Okay. Yeah. Anyway, I hey, you. you know, you're related to whoever this person is took a bat on my sandwich was here at this time. I knew it was you at that time, along with Zez, a few other people. And he matches your brother. So chances are it's probably not Zez because he doesn't have any kind of like, I don't know, Fedora DNA in, in, the, in the mix. So, <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> <you're rock. laughs> so that's basically what it boils down to. Technically, technically, they haven't even violated his rights per se in terms of they didn't take anything actively from right. him. They yeah. banned his DNA. And he didn't have anything actually publicly posted anywhere online. His relatives <laughs> did. But this goes back to the element of with law enforcement, the, the, the curiosity of it is, is there was no there was no uh warrant for any information. Yeah. That so they there was nothing nothing was said, okay, go ahead, you're allowed to do this. They just mm -hmm. did it and then used it as a method to narrow it down and are at their best guess this is the guy. So so wait, hang on. Let's play around with the idea. What if this isn't the guy? What if their methodology is all wrong? Well, okay, so we, 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 okay, I'm sorry, I might have opened a can of worms there, but that because obviously we're not privy to all the court details. Yeah, but you know the, the the way they the way they narrowed down to this person is they found DNA matches that way narrowed down the scope of possibilities, and at that point it was like there's a possibility of like a thousand people, and they're related to this person, and this one person happened to live in California at this time. It's kind of a no-brainer. Now, the other thing that's interesting is like, like what uh, uh, NQN says here, which is so basically they impersonated uh, the DNA owner to find owner's relatives. And that's exactly it. This is, this is where we get kind of a stubborn point here that, that makes me kind of question things. They created a account and submitted DNA that was not their own. So they were flat out, and this is no way around to say this, they flat out impersonated this person mm -hmm. to try mm -hmm. to find associations to find him. That that feels... Almost, in a way, a violation of some sort? It really does. And see, I, I my thoughts on the matter, and I, I'm not... I'm going to preempt this with... <laughs> I'm glad they caught the killer, but yeah. I, I, okay, quick disclaimer: <laughs> nobody here. I, I will actually speak for these two. Nobody here has any problem with the killer being caught if he is in fact the killer. Right? Yeah. We're not trying to end this guy in particular. We can take this particular situation out of out of the mix. If we're right. just talking about the technical elements of it. <laughs> My feeling on it, though, is. Is first of all, if you have to impersonate somebody else to get the information, should it be admissible in court? The answer to that question is no, because as far as I'm concerned, that means they illegally they illegally obtain the information, and it should not be admissible in court. Okay, but but then you get into a big realm about impersonation in terms of undercover cop. He's mm -hmm. impersonating a drug dealer. He's impersonating yeah. connection. He's impersonating a hitman. You you want to kill your wife and you hire a, a, a hitman, which is a cop impersonating a hitman to catch you. Are those examples considered illegal? No, they've been doing that for the longest time. <laughs> See, this is this is we get a lot of gray area here. But this is this is this is something that's noteworthy because at this point we're literally talking about the kind of next evolution here. We're talking about literally, literally what's going to happen now. We have all this technology. And the other thing to keep in mind is this is touching on the bare edge of the fact when it comes to having a fingerprint in the digital world, this is another good example of it. Even when you don't actively do something, if you don't actively have information out there, you create a, a, a perfect silhouette of yourself out there, which... <laughs> Pretty much is a good symbol symbol of what you are in every detail. And uh, not quite nerds pretty much hit it on the hit the nail on the head. 
does does a bad process or lack of process that leads to a good outcome justify the bad process or lack of process? If it does, does that set a precedent for future cases? Now that's 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 very interesting, and and unfortunately, you know, we start out talking about the aspect of, um, will, setting up a precedent for things like this. Yeah, we're getting we're getting to to you know <laughs> into law, and I I don't know. I'm not a lawyer. I'm not a judge. I don't yeah. know the final points of it. I know that there have been a lot of, a lot of situations with past judgments where they have used you know prior law to justify their determinations. But that said, there have also been notable cases where they've actually gone against uh, uh, prior verdicts. Yeah. So, yeah. But it, again, it, it's one of those things of whenever there's a situation where you're to, to, we're going to pull out a little bit here, be a little more general in, in the tech element, which is we're talking now about not just DNA that you leave, behind but right. any kind of tech fingerprint or digital fingerprint you leave on the internet how much right do does anybody have to that in any matter any way and again the, the hard thing to wrap your head around is again not necessarily like i wouldn't i would say a police trying to get at my my browser history for example would be straight up you have to have a warrant you have to have justification you have to have just cause etc but what about just sniffing out that the lack of that data again if you create a silhouette if you cut a hole out that's the shape of you you can't have people say well don't look at it you I, you, you can't look at the shape of it and know that you know it's me you're not allowed to well it's like okay but we can't not notice this, you know? It, it's a lot like stalking someone. It's similar, man. It's like trying to f go rummaging through their trash yeah, to try and figure off. out where they are, where they're going. Maybe they have an appointment somewhere. Yeah. It's... Well, yeah. And, and, and to that point, to that point that, you know, as a credible example, to kind of help people understand, when I say you leave a void, if somebody's happens to monitor or have you know some kind of monitor system at the grocery store you can tell them you're not allowed to you know have video of me at the grocery store say yeah. the way so you say, I, I do not want to be videotaped that's fine but I can look at the videotape you have no right to tell me not to look at the videotape for all the time that you're not there mm -hmm. and have I noticed that there is a time gap Every Thursday from five to six, I'm not allowed to see. Yeah, you it can make spell something out. It, yeah, you, you make a deduction, an, an educated exactly. deduction out yeah. of it. Yeah. And then, well, and, um, and, and, and by and, the way, uh, if the cops needed my browser history, it's it's just Pornhub, 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 yeah. Pornhub. Yeah. So, uh, no, here's another thing. <laughs> Before, before I let you go on, uh, uh, CZ, um, not not quite nerds makes the point of. Um, in the EU right now, there's the right to be forgotten. And you're absolutely right. But again, in the example we just gave, here's the problem. We, we can say, right before you've gone, you can have that, that segment of something deleted, but it just leaves a, a, a U-sized hole there. Yeah. So this is, this is where things get very, very awkward because you literally have a point now, instead of having a situation where courts or law enforcement can be restricted uh, uh, grabbing something that's tangible that you've that you've left. Now all of a sudden we're talking about having tangible access to things you didn't leave, which can paint a picture. Yeah. And with digital, it's so much more blatant and clear than it ever was in the past. I mean, even even before, you know, there was a lot of huff and buff about all of the video surveillance and whatnot <sighs> around here. UK was it was like you just they learned to expect the fact that everywhere you walk there's a goddamn camera. There's yeah, it's all cool circuit there. I mean they, they've gotten very big on that, and again even from that even if you say the right to be forgotten, you're gonna leave you're gonna leave a a, a notable fingerprint of where you're not. So to get back to this, and I, yep. I if, if you've got any more to put into this, let me know. I, it really comes down to is just a cautionary tale of what can be gotten about you 
now without any sort of warrant or whatever. And again, are we are we at a cusp, CZ, where we need to start creating new laws that specifically address this type of information, this this lack of information they can grab? Um, I think so. I think well, and not just that. Um, to slide something else into uh, precedence here, um, like my my phone has a fingerprint scanner. That's how I unlock my phone. According to current laws, if I give them my phone, they cannot unlock it. On the other hand, they can take my finger and press my finger to it and unlock it. They can do it yeah. forcefully is what you mean, right? Yeah. But it, they can, they can take case, my but... finger, press it to the back of my phone, and unlock my phone with my own fingerprint even if I say no, they cannot unlock my phone. But even in, even in those cases, they have to have a justifiable cause, and that is that is at that point, you know, if they were going to look for something on your phone, they'd have to have a reason for it. They can't just look at your phone and go, "Oh, hey, look, he's got, uh, you know, bestiality pictures or some weird thing like that." Okay, now I can charge him for it. it. It doesn't work like that. They have to have a a just cause to look at your phone. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know what? We know he is illegally <clears throat> importing copies of E.T. for the Atari, and we need to get proof of it. I have to go out and get a warrant, get the warrant, then go to your phone, then make you unlock it, then find the pictures of the E.T. cartridges well, that you're smuggling. Well, actually, the reason this, the reason I'm kind of aware of the law on unlocking phones is... Uh, I still have, I used to live in Michigan. I still have friends that live in Michigan. Michigan um, is a no-fault state when it comes to accidents. But <laughs> if there's an accident, the first thing they do, the first thing the police will do is request phone. Because they want to see if you're texting. If they find, mm -hmm. if they look at your text history and they've had, and you've, uh, texted within the last like, you know, little while Probably within thirty seconds or whatever. Well, of when the accident would have happened, you're automatically charged with uh, distracted dri distracted driving. Mm, okay. <laughs> well, if you don't volunteer your phone, that's probable cause to open your phone and find out what you're hiding. <laughs> But they, well, they would obviously need permission. They would need a warrant or something like that, right? No, well, probable cause. Probable cause means they can yeah, just do it? Probable cause gives police uh, a lot more power to do things. Got it, okay. I'm not really sure this particular instance can run into um, to get into the realm of probable cause, per se. Um, and again, even... It's, just, it's kind of those things like, you know, to look for something specific, you have to have probable cause or a warrant, whatever the case. But to just be told to overtly ignore something that's visible by obscurity, it's kind of hard to justify that. Or even, I, I'm not sure even how to even create a law to say, uh, uh, ignore the whole, so to speak. Yeah. Because you, you're literally talking about the void of data. That is being presented in those cases, so <laughs> it, it's it's a difficult thing. Nevertheless, um, any last thoughts from you guys? Uh, no, I think uh, we've pretty much ran this one. I'm, I'm going to say I, I agree with uh, Component Z in that uh, if, if this is the kind of technology and methodology that can start being used to solve these things, there should be some sort of laws in place. Fair enough. All yeah. right. So to that to that end, guys, uh, we are going to go ahead and pick another topic here and see where it gets us, and hopefully things will be well. Number two, so Zez, we're going to pull up the Atari VCS. You, did it again. you just called me Zez again. I'm sorry. I'm <laughs> sorry. I, I don't know. You I don't wear the so fedora. I can't help it. <laughs> I'm not going to wear the fedora. I'm so I really am. So I we're, don't we're wear the fedora. We're going to go ahead and up. Uh, the, the, the conversation piece here is actually so submitted happy. by, I believe, 
by CZ. And that topic is, are we facing another console war? Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> now, go, go ahead and, 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 and sign us off here, CZ, because I'm, I'm a little curious as to why you would look at, of all things, this Atari abomination and think that there's <laughs> going to be a console war happening. Because I'm not seeing it, I'll be honest with you. Well... Okay, okay, let me preempt that by saying not a top-tier console war. <laughs> I'll get to that here in just a second. So, yeah, uh, explain. Go ahead. So, recently, the Atari VCS uh, went on pre-order. In the first day on Indiegogo... Over two million dollars worth of pre-sale. Wow! Now this is a this is a console that has two options. There's a all black option, or there's a black and wood green ah, retro option. <laughs> um, it's still games. <laughs> the the black console, uh, you could get for a hundred and ninety nine dollars with no controller. Or Which, two twenty nine um, with the with uh, I think the retro joy, joystick controller. The wood grain was two ninety nine with I think both controllers. Mm, okay. Um. Okay, hold on. This just to understand things here. I can get the wood grade both controllers or I get the black one with no controllers or a controller. Uh, Already they're, 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 they're going for like the Microsoft architecture of options. <laughs> you know, so confusing. Nobody knows what the fuck is going on. Is that, is that, that, uh, is that the modus here? Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> Great. Um, now, it, it, you like 15 <laughs> options while we're at it. <laughs> Now to bring myself to bring back where I was where I said about not being a top tier console war. Let's face it, the Atari VCS is not going after um, your Xbox PlayStation. Or, your, yeah. or your PlayStation. But what it's going to uh, give a fight to is the Switch. Because let's what? face it. The Switch, <laughs> as a home console, is not that strong. No, it isn't. Comparatively um, to an Xbox One or, an, or a PS4, it's it's a considerably weaker console. The, the Switch... Power-wise, is... yes. Yeah. So how does that even matter? The, well, the, 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 the Switch is like making gangbusters on numbers. The Switch, if you look at it, is only an ARM processor. It's basically a mobile processor. An NV it's actually based on the NVIDIA, uh, NVIDIA Tegra processor, too. Tegra, yeah. Tegra, yeah. 32, it's only got 32-gigabyte uh, uh, storage. It outputs at uh, 1920 by 1080 at 60 frames per second. The VCS is running an AMD PC-style processor. So it's our... While it's not on par with the custom processors that the um, Xbox the PlayStation and the, 4. Yeah, the, right. the PlayStation and the Xbox are running, it's actually more powerful than the Tegra. Still only 32 uh, mega RAM, or uh, 32 gig of storage. Um, but it's 4K, 60 frames per second, and has a. Uh, hmm. and is set up for external storage. Which is something that the uh, Switch isn't designed for. Mm -hmm. That's true. I, 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 I'm about ready to call bullshit on this period right here because I, I'm I'm sorry. I'm looking at the details here, and we're talking about a console system here that has has a full PC experience. First of all, this is a console that's going to have a baked-in capacity for a lot of retro games to start with. Yeah. Literally grab the box and have access to a, a boatload of classic games like Combat and Pitfall and so on. But on top of that, it also is going to have 
baked in from the get-go access to streaming, social web browsing, music, listening, and more, as they put it, including things such as Netflix and Spotify, as well as the capacity to stream games. I'm assuming kind of like Stream Link or a Steam Link. Yeah. Uh, close. For PC titles, this all right. I, put put the facade and the in the internals aside for a moment here. I mean, put, close the black box back up so you don't know what's inside of it. This is this. You can't unplug this. You can't take it with you. Yeah, it's not this portable. Is, this is this is not something that would. I wouldn't go down to the store and go. Hmm. Switch or Atari. Uh, there, I I don't see it. I'm confused because yeah, while the specs are lower gear than you know the top tier big game, uh, Sony and 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 Microsoft uh, offerings, this thing has the potential to technically get its foot in the door with the big boys in the fact that they can do more. And I only and I only say this under the strictest of understanding. That there is a defined possibility that game streaming is going to be the next major thing that's going to drop for us in the game community. And we I've seen signs of it everywhere in terms of the ability to stream. Um, uh, oh, it, what, what, it, look at what, Game Pass uh, with the Xbox. Well, Game Pass, but on the Switch, we just talked recently on the podcast about... Oh, yes, they were uh, streaming Resident, uh, Resident Evil 7. Resident Evil 7 to the Switch, but it's a streamed game only, not a local. So the, and the, only the specs of the Japan. Switch are irrelevant in that sense. Zez, that is important. Zez, to be fair, the Oya was... Oh, yeah. Actually, a little more ahead time. of its time than yes. really bad. Um, you know, first of all, we didn't when the Oya came out. We didn't quite have the uh, the internet backbone, the the internet speeds, and the well, lower we ping rates that we have now. The um, problem is there wasn't much out there for the Oya to take advantage of. It, uh, to, to what to what uh, uh, NQN is saying. I, my first thought when I first heard smell of the rumored Atari box, yeah, the, I thought was, oh, it's a retro. It's, it, it's just another retro box. It's like the NES Mini. It's or the, like, the NES you know, Classic. Yeah, yeah. It, but it's not. No, it's not. It's, it's a console. It has. They are, <laughs> they are putting themselves potentially in the right place. And if they're lucky, at the right time. If game streaming becomes a thing this box right here could be a contender to even go after the big boys and i only say that again because z uh uh, uh, uh component z said very specifically i got it i got it i got it <laughs> the high end the the wood grain with both controllers is how much uh i think 2.99 Yes, that's Xbox? correct. What's yeah. the cheapest Xbox or cheapest PS4 you can get right now? Uh, PS4 in in Canada, uh, I think the cheapest is three ninety nine, four hundred bucks. PS4, yeah. yeah. Xbox, if you want an Xbox One X, here it's going to cost you six hundred bucks. Now here's here's a here's a pivotal here's a pivotal thing. Pivotal thing. You take a box like this, it has the potential to stream. You give it a little perk that out of the box with nothing and you get the cheaper the cheaper version of it right and you say we're going to give you all the retro games okay yeah uh, they have Zez, and you've uh, got if i may jump rumored. in real quick uh Zez, yeah, i ahead. think that's list price uh i was going off the pre-order price just to be fair mm. uh because sure. that was the only thing i had seen was the pre-order pricing from indigo okay so there's also talk about uh, games like Zevius, uh, Zevius or whatever it's called, Stampede, River Raid, Pressure Cooker, uh, Pac-Man, Galaxian, things like that, Dig Dug. Asteroid, I mean, all the good stuff. Yeah. But you, you take a game like console like this that has streaming capacity for things like Netflix, like Spotify. 4K support. In, it's been their plans for the Amazon Assistant, Alexa. Sorry for anybody who just had their boxes go off. 
Hey, Alexa, <laughs> add ball watch gaming on YouTube to my watch list. <laughs> no. Or if you ever want to be mean, you go Xbox off. <laughs> Thank God I'm not playing. More people. But seriously, <laughs> you take you take all that in a in a cost reduced manner. And this is this is expensive for a first round, but they're gonna be able to make it cheaper over time. And then you make one pivotal important thing, which is strike a deal with a certain game you know, digital yeah. game vendor yeah. okay. that happens to be associated to pressurized liquids. And all of a sudden, you have the capacity to stream all of like a boatload of content that rivals what PlayStation or Xbox can provide to you. Now, so now the one the one thing that well, the two things that really seem weird for me on this is, um, out of the box, it does have a microphone array. Yes. Which may I add? May I add something? Uh, there's actually a video somewhere online I was watching where the very beginning of the video starts with a voice saying uh, "Atari on," and you see the logo light up. So when you mention on microphone, I'm thinking that's exactly they're they're showing what that would do. Absolutely. Well, again, they're gonna have yeah. they're gonna have the Amazon Alexa, uh, Amazon Echo service mm -hmm. immediately with it. So you gotta have the microphones built in there. And the only th the only other thing that that I don't want to say bothers me, but surprises me, is it's got no drive of any type. So no, it's probably what, no Blu-ray drive, flash no... <clears throat> but it's thirty-two gig, right? Yeah, but it does have the. It, it, like I said, it does support uh, external hard drives. Yeah. So you can yeah. go put a you know two terabyte external hard drive and save all your games. So, so what we're looking at here is basically a. What games are you saving? You need to have three, two terabytes of drive. Everything's stream. We're talking about streaming games, and you're talking about saving Storage. games local. What? It can be done. Why not? If you want, it's yeah, all. I mean, right? if you can get sure. it for local storage, or you know, because <clears throat> we're talking about streaming games, but you know, we don't know if they're going to open up like a buy store as well. If you have external storage. You can oh, buy a game, download it, and not have to worry about "quote unquote" online play. Maybe, maybe they'll use smartphones for online communications and stuff like that. <laughs> <laughs> oh wait, can I buy a dongle so I can plug my Atari into like one port and my phone into another, my headphones into another, and then want my ass? <laughs> yeah. No, I was I was saying earlier. So this is kind of like an in between device. In between, it's not right up there with the grade A guys like you were saying Z, Z, Z. and it's it's a little more of a powerhouse because it can do 4K. Uh, it has streaming capability uh, than say the the Switch. The only thing the Switch really has, I think, on top of this is the fact that you can pick it up and walk away, which it does fantastically well. You go straight from television screen to handheld like like that and it does yeah. really really well I, I i will honestly say i was i was a little more surprised than i expected to be about how actually functional portable that thing is yeah um yeah. but again i i really to, to to get back to the original point of me kind of calling bullshit here on on <laughs> TV, is simply that i agree with you that there's a potential for a console war but i don't think anything including this would necessarily be in competition with the Switch. Mm. I do, however, see this guy possibly having a better chance at taking up the, the space in which the 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 the, the Ouya or Oya or what the fuck you want to call it, the damn thing is, it's just in the right time. You yeah. know? I think I think we're finally at a point here where we're not we're not gonna it's not gonna be stuck in the past where it needs you know, 1.21 gigawatts of power and can't find <laughs> a nuclear source to run it. <laughs> Mr. Fusion. But, you know, and, and <laughs> Zest did hit the, one of the nails on the head with the Oya is name a game for the Oya. They're just, yeah. Name a game it. for the Oya. Uh, isn't Angry Birds on it? No, I'm just... <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of like, I, I'm really, 
So it's interesting because you're you're saying that you find that this new device, the Atari VCS, is more comparable or could creep onto the toes of Xbox and PS4. I'm I'm actually more leaning towards it's going to creep onto the toes of the Switch, with the exception of it, the Switch being portable. Yeah, I, I, I just really think it, Nintendo's it, got their their niche locked down because nobody's making anything. I, I, I think the way the Switch is and the way Nintendo's environment is. Is it? It's very personal, walled garden environment that they they really go out to that corner of somewhere that yeah. nobody else is trying to get to, and then builds out from there. Yeah, there's people who want to go that direction, but they have a long way to go to get there. Whereas other systems like the Xbox, like the PlayStation, are more tangible. This is closer to that realm because it's a system that you come to, not that comes with you. Right. Okay. And I, and I, I, I mean, you know better than I do, Kirok. And I, I, I do look to you for for an honest opinion here. You have the Switch. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I, my, my perception is there's a big difference between having to go to the system to play it as opposed to be able to take the system where you want to go and do stuff on the move. And I feel like there's a different, at least in my history. It, it, it is a total difference because it's like, okay, so I've owned different handheld consoles such as the PSP, the Game Boy Advance when I was much younger, uh, the, yeah, the PlayStation Vita, I have that as well. And so these are great consoles. They're, they're all really good in their own way and they all have great games. And if you have them, you can play them and enjoy them. And the cool thing about those is you could always take a game with you. <clears throat> excuse me the thing i never liked was i always wanted to take that game that's on my xbox with me or my playstation with me with that handheld and continue the game while i'm at work on my lunch or while i'm in the park or something like that well the switch is really the only true console slash portable that has ever done that oh. like fully because i remember buying a game for ps4 it was uh Final Fantasy Worlds or something like that. I can't remember. It came out not too long ago. I bought it for the, the Vita, and I didn't like it on the handheld. So I returned it, bought it for the PlayStation 4, and I liked it more. And I discovered that there were differences such as voiceover over everything on the PS4, but no voiceover, only on certain parts in the handheld game, which are the same game, but they're not the same. Well, the the Switch is the first one that everything's the same because it's the same freaking game. Which is which is nice, and this is what I'm saying. I think this, the Switch has a certain personable thing, and, and so much so over that they've actually been able to expand on that realm. To give you a great example, look at uh, um, what's it called? Uh, Let's go Pikachu, whatever it is. Let's go Eevee, the new the new big yeah. hotness. This is taking an already mobile oh, yeah. game for mobile phones, which is Pokemon Go. And yeah. link that to the Switch so you can transfer items, basically caught Pokemon to the game on the mobile device. Technically, yes, you could take your phone, go out, catch Pokemon, come back home, load them onto to your whatever box at home and play the game there. But the Switch has an inherent quality. I mean, I'll be honest with you, as silly as it sounds, one of my fondest memories about having mobility combined with localization for games yeah is i don't remember i don't remember the damn name of the game anymore but it was a game for the dreamcast that you played on the tv uh, but then the memory card has a screen yes. on it and i could pop that out and take it with me to work where i had to go work at blockbuster and i could yell between people dee -dee 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 -dee, and fuck around on the cartridge and to come back and put the cartridge in and get a little perk in my game and it was That's, exciting that was awesome that was awesome i remember i'm not gonna I had get one. that feeling here no, Listen, you won't. Not at all. Good for me. <laughs> um, so, the my 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 argument with the switch is yeah. good for what it is, but it falls into an area where it's tried to be two different things, and arguably not either one. <clears throat> Okay, well, but it okay. It, uh, I look at it as it does both things actually really well. So well, okay. Like I, I have a 3ds. Yeah, I actually have a 3ds XL. I yeah, love, I here. love my 3ds. Yeah. The two things I love about it are I can close it and put it into like a pocket. Mm-hmm. 
the screens are protected. I can I can leave it running and get street pass. So if I pass, yes. if I pass people, I can it'll step count. You know, not that these are great things. Um, <laughs> but are you looking at the chat? <laughs> yes, I am. Not great things, but at least they don't suck. Um, but these are, you know, the fact that it it's you know it's it was designed as a mobile device. The camera, yeah, I get you know, you. It's got cameras for you know. It, instead of having to get your kids a, you know, mobile device, a digital camera, it's got the camera time. Now, mind you, most kids now have cell phones and those cell phones have cameras, but that. Um. But the the I've seen you know having seen the switch in the wild, it's large. And it's, it is a big device. It is a big device. Yeah, it's not something that's easily portable. Right. Now, granted, it does yep. have better hardware than my 3DS, so you're going to get better games. The screens are <laughs> I, a lot better. I, I can I can see where you're coming from, and that's and part of the reason. Like I'm in agreement with what you're saying in terms of size and portability compared to say a 3DS is because lately I've been playing my PSP and my old Game Boy Advance. And I'm enjoying it more because I can just throw them in my pocket and away I go. Well, okay. So, so that 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 that's one particular piece of architecture, which is the size of it. Is it pocketable or not? And yeah, to be fair, if if if, if it was twenty it's years ago, better. we were all still wearing our Junkos, you know, we, we could we could easily fit in the pocket, no problem. I mean, for that matter, I could fit my fucking Xbox in there too. But I digress. Here's the thing. I, I understand where you're coming from, CZ. But the fact of the matter is, and I, I don't own a Switch, so this is a little bit, you know, of an outside opinion in a sense. Well, you may have a console that is 100% in the realm of being a console, and you may have a mobile device that's 100% right. being that. The Switch, I feel like, from all, from all counts of talking to people, does a good job of being about, you know... 70 or 80 percent console and 60 or 70 percent mobile when you add those all together you get you know 140 percent as opposed to 100 percent of something that's what it feels like to me it feels like we add the two elements together you get more than than a single whole gotcha and and to that end again I think that's where switch excels and that's why I just don't see this Atari device being in that realm but again where i see this thing really becoming something that can be viable it's being in the right place and hopefully in the right time to be something they can take advantage of what it feels like we're on the edge of that whole streaming world i mean to give you a great example here microsoft just recently surpassed Google in market cap. And that's all largely attributed to the Azure uh, service, <clears throat> the cloud-based services that Microsoft provides. Another thing to point out, we've got now two different companies have announced gaming phones. And this is a topic that I actually really want to dive into yeah. in, in, in excess for another hour just because... I'm so tickled by this idea of where this could go. Yeah, have, I, so, I want to make I, I still want to make this episode three. I want to make, I, I, I want to make I, that I, next I, month's topic. I will, not, I will not dive into too deep here, but yeah, next episode that may be a must talk about topic. But with gaming phones, the idea of having a mobile device that can stream games more avidly, and and to be fair, there's are early games out there like Fortnite, for example, that can stream some games to the mobile device because of that streaming games has now become from that yeah it's a cute idea but if your internet sucks you're screwed too hey wait a minute it's getting to that realm of possibility now there's a large enough number of people that have uh internet that can do it and and, and again before everybody blows up and has a has a a meltdown I know there's still a large sect of people out there that don't have viable internet for streaming games. I get that. And I'm, I feel for you. 
my, my deepest apologies. I mean, I'm lucky that I can get Comcast where I'm at, and that's through some some buggery and literally running a, a power cord through a forest to get it to my house, okay? So I understand. But we're at that point now where streaming capacity is viable, and to that end, that means that the powerhouse uh, hardware that we have to have in our houses becomes less and less critical. So if you're coming up in this world, if you're starting off with a more affordable box that can stream, while these juggernauts are spending big buku bucks developing and maintaining and trying to convince users to spend <laughs> five, six plus hundred dollars for a hefty rig to play localized games, you slip in and play comparable games for a much cheaper price and less need of hardware if it's the right time, if gotcha. it's the right time, yeah. then they're going to make out like gangbusters. Plus, that you got You also have to consider that they have another thing in their favor, and that is, and and, and the, it was on Indiegogo, right? Yeah. Yeah. So the, they the, blew the doors off of it. Exactly. So they they blew the doors off the pre-orders, and they have like what over two million already in pre-orders, and. That is another advantage in their favor, the fact that they have people who are probably people who played the original Atari and are nostalgic about it and just drop the money no problem. For the record, just to make sure we're clear, their, yeah. Indiegogo, their Indiegogo goal was yeah. 100000 yeah, 100 grand. And yeah. they have blew in excess of that by 2,601%. It's <laughs> crazy. But... Uh... It's crazy. Yeah. Now, anybody who says you can't give more than 100%, well, <laughs> apparently you can. Uh, and now, when I look at the specs for the Atari VCS, I think they're more along the lines of the specs we'd see in the Nintendo Switch Pro. Yeah. <laughs> you got permission to tell me off. Go ahead. I swear to God. <laughs> you're trying so hard, except the fact you're not winning this year's predictions. <laughs> It's going to happen. Uh, it's going to happen. Now, I, I, do have a, I, I do have a kind of a question for you guys. Because every time we have this big, we've had a console war uh, appear, as, as, at least as far as I can remember, we've always ended up with essentially scaling it down to two consoles and, like, two main consoles and one independent if you would yeah like almost almost like the almost like the u.s politics you have the <laughs> you know you have the two mains and then you have the independent hmm that always seems to be the case doesn't it <laughs> <laughs> yeah but if the if the atari vcs does become a mainstay player Who do we think's gonna fall? Microsoft. Because you know Microsoft in a heartbeat. Yeah, I would I would agree because Sony's been kicking ass and now for the first time they're starting to say that they're seeing their sales dip. That's why all these topics came out recently about them potentially releasing a PS5. Five. Right, exactly. No, um, I mean, even I, I, even put the numbers aside for them. I, I'm saying Microsoft. Just simply because Microsoft is going to much more easily let go of something that's not being super profitable because they have an easy fallback. Mm. It's just like with with uh, uh, Sega dropping out of the running. Yeah, they didn't drop out of the running just because. Oh, you know, we're not doing as well as we want to. Everybody's hurting a little bit. They're vying. They have three different companies all trying to vie for attention. But when Sega started to go down, they realized, you know what, we could just cut bait and run, we have a software development team, we have an alternative we can run with. Microsoft just go back to the books and go, you know what? That's fine. Let PlayStation run with it. Let Atari run with it. Atari has to host a streaming game somewhere. And oh yeah, by the way, we have Azure. You heard about mm -hmm. us? Come to the dark side. We have cookies. <laughs> see, see the... <laughs> I, I agree with you when you say Microsoft because of the fact that Nintendo's having such good success with what they've done. They literally pulled themselves out of the ashes. 
But I think Microsoft has put so much into Xbox that they wouldn't just cut it out like that. Well, they, they wouldn't just, just cut it for no reason. But what I'm saying is that the, th the threshold for them to dump out is... May, may not be as much. Well, yeah, I mean, the, 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 the hitting that break points can be easier for them because they have other av avenues that they can pivot to. Mm. The, you have to remember, we talk about Sony. Sony, as the large top-tier Sony family, they have a lot of different things. But when you're talking about the Sony game division, they don't. They have a game studio that only pumps out a small portion of the many games that run on their hardware. Mm-hmm. And to that point or to that end, if their console goes under, that's going to hurt because that's that's that that's their entire company in that regard. Microsoft, Xbox isn't a discrete company like it is with with Sony so much as it's just another building on the campus of Xbox. And again, they have plenty of other services they they can integrate with. I, I can be totally off base here. Don't get me wrong, but I mean, when I think about the the whole, um, when I think about the whole aspect about what consoles are out there, I I don't think Nintendo is gonna give a shit either way because ever since like the Wii on, yeah. they've kind of been <laughs> off on their own little realm, and it's just like saying. When you see like you know Michael Dell and Compact and HP getting into it with each other, nobody's saying, "Well, yeah, but how do they relate to Apple?" It's apples and oranges. Apple's off doing their own fucking thing. They couldn't give a shit less what Dell is doing. Mm, they true, never have. True. They're never going to. Nintendo's kind of in that same realm. They're off over here, and they're, they're doing not their doing own anything. thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not quite as separated as that, but you know. Yeah, well, and, no. and it says for 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 the record, man. I'm not saying that there's Z. nothing to. I, I, I'm talking to Zez. <laughs> uh, to be to be fair, I, I Sony Studios is is a sizable studio. I'm not, I'm not I'm not trying to dismiss them per se. Uh, they do have quite a few titles out there, but they're they're not the lion's share of what makes up Sony Games uh, division. <laughs> so. Yeah, I mean, uh, again, I'm just saying they have two halves, whereas Microsoft has many bit of parts, and the Xbox division is just one small portion of it. So you cut you cut a leg off a chicken, chicken's gonna have problems. You cut a leg off a centipede. Eh. Uh, toxic. That's that's it in the notes. Dell is naval. HP is Mandarin. <laughs> But on that note, I I think it's time to start wrapping up. Yeah. yeah. When we start getting into those bad jokes, I think it's time to start wrapping up. Are you sure? Yeah. Oh, all right. Fine, Dad. <laughs> God. Hey, uh, listen, guys. We always do appreciate you guys joining us. Uh, we do this. We do this normally once a month, first Tuesday of the month, to talk about the wonders of. Whatever, again, topics we want to talk about. Um, officially, the next episode would be episode three next month. And again, I want to talk about mobile gaming because we've had mobile mobile or gaming mobile devices now coming out that are very popular, potentially. Uh, that said, we're actually going to have a special episode next week, next Tuesday. Same bat time, same bat channel. Um, and we're actually going to have a special guest on that's going to regale us with his thoughts and opinions on that. And uh, I'm kind of hoping that uh, we can maybe have... Uh, uh, well, I know we're going to have Linz on, potentially, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. I mean, Linz, Linz would not show up for this, would she? Hmm. <laughs> no, I, I'm pretty sure Linz is going to be here for this one. <laughs> Um, but yeah, I, the, I, I've seen, I see this person go by a couple different names. Um, what's the right one, Linz? I mean, I heard Boisterous Coconuts. There's Asterius. However, there's Asterius. However, a lot of things here. But it was, if, if you know this person, you know who he is. And, um, 
if you like his brand of humor, I'm hoping we can drag that that brand of uh, humor out of him uh, on the episode. And uh, right now, looking at the, the the wonderful list of ideas and topics, it, it sounds like our top contender is going to be uh, gaming and mental health, and that'll be a um, an interesting uh, interesting topic to, to tackle, to say the least, because yeah. we've, we've we have way way back in the end of the podcast talked a little bit about uh, gaming and mental health. But this would be this is definitely a topic that's worth bringing up, and we're talking about in a little more depth, and just kind of get to know about uh, what's currently out there and what the future could be. And I think it's worth revisiting now, especially because VR is something that has definitely been sticking around. And I think is is definitely a level of immersion that could make a big difference in how people are affected. So um, that might be something that is worth talking about in a little more detail. So definitely stick around for that. So again, next Tuesday, 11 o'clock Eastern, we will be having that wonderful guest on. And then beyond that, again, normally first Tuesday every month, we have this wonderful show here. Again, guys, we are but a small portion of the largest hold that is Ball Rocket Gaming. We are a gaming community, and we believe it or not, aside from doing wonderful media type stuff like this show or like our weekly podcast we do every Saturday night at 10 o'clock, we also have a bunch of wonderful people who like to play games i know shocking it's gaming network gaming <laughs> play games on occasion um but we have people who stream that stuff all day long day and night no not, not day and night but we do have people who stream throughout the week on this channel and if we're not uh actively streaming on this channel we will be hosting people who are part of the baller gaming community so i definitely encourage you to make sure that you uh go up there and hit the little follow button and uh, make sure you get your notifications set so you can find out when we are streaming stuff. And that way you can come join us. Also, if you are interested, we do have also a YouTube channel. So you can go to the YouTubes and catch all the back episodes of the wonderful shows that we do and have done in the past. There's also um, a our, our kind of pseudo-sister show, which is uh, Sequel Syndrome, that's run by Ziploc Bob. And he uh, streams on his channel. Over on Ziploc Bob or Twitch.tv slash Ziploc Bob, um, but he hosts the uh, the the after after file, if you will, over on our YouTube, which is youtubecom slash Gaming. So you can go over and check that out. And I also do a show myself called Inside the Gaming Mind, which is a show where I interview different people in the gaming industry, from other YouTubers to people who. Uh, make games and things like that. So you can check that out as well. And that is only going to be on the YouTube channel. So make sure you go there, check that out, subscribe, hit the bell icon, smash the like button, beat the crap out of your computer, all that good stuff for it. Last but not least, guys, again, we are a community. If you want to talk to us, we do have a Discord channel. And again, all the links are down here below me on this page here. We do like to chat with people and try to scare them off. So the first day you come in, it's probably going to be worse than it normally is. And <laughs> I could be lying, but nevertheless, if you want to be part of the community, I definitely encourage you to come on by and be part of the community. Again, we do a lot of gaming stuff and have a lot of fun talk and chatter. Um, we are also looking for people's help in some ways. First, the best way to help out is just come be a part of the community. Say hi, come hang out in the chat with us. We have a bunch of people who like to chat and talk uh, during these episodes. We like to talk back at them. We can also use your help, and, and there is a myriad of ways to help us. First and foremost is we can always use the next pair of hands to help run the shows, help plan the shows, create new shows, whatever you want. Start, start our cargo cult that is us, and I will be happy to follow in that regard. Um, likewise, you want to do the more of the armchair way, then go ahead and, and pay tribute to us and a monetary value. There are many ways to do that. First and foremost is since you're already here on the Twitch channel, we are actually affiliated. So right up there, yeah. you can uh, go ahead and subscribe to us or drop us some bits or anything like that. And we will graciously say thank you, much like uh, Lord Bunny did on the podcast last week. Um, likewise, we also do have a Patreon account. So you're welcome to head over to patreon.com slash Gaming. Uh, we even have a PayPal account, believe it or not. And the easiest way to find all of this, guys, is just go to bottlerocketgaming.com. All the links are there for you. That's probably the easiest way to find us if you ever forget about it. Just remember, Bottle Rocket Gaming, and you're golden. <sighs> anything else, guys? Did I miss anything? Oh, yeah, uh, these... these, these these guys right here actually do streaming stuff as well. So if you want to catch up with them, we have 
Component Z here that does occasional stuff uh, on on the Twitches. And then we also got the guy below that. That's the crazy Canadian we call Kirok. Kirok Craft on Twitch as well as Kirok Craft on YouTube. You can catch out with his shenanigans going on. And yep, actually, yep. Kirok also does another show called Hop Along. Yeah, Hop Along Games. You look that up, Hop Along Games. Because that's a kind of a sofa surfing uh, couch style uh, show. So Yeah, just banter game banter game banter and oh yeah by the way um cz has a cat he likes to show off uh, <laughs> i lock him i lock him out of the office today so <laughs> you guys can have cat and cat butt on your uh keyboard, keyboard. yeah tell you what? harness with a camera face the cat butt 24 7 cat butt cam I I will bet you anything you'll have a gazillion followers. Probably, but no. <laughs> oh, but uh. no. <laughs> All right, guys. I think we've about had enough for tonight. I'm sure you've probably had enough of us by now. So uh, we'll go ahead and just say goodnight, and we'll catch you again next week. Next week, yes. Johnny Keller, 11 p.m. Eastern. Good night, Ciao. guys. Bye, guys. <laughs> Ciao. <laughs>